Since the last time we've been here, a couple of things have changed. One of which is uh, I am officially down 100 pounds. Yeah. I know some of you in the front are looking at me right now like, well, how big were you? I know. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules, yeah, yeah. Anyways, you guys, let me tell you what happened. Basically, I, I found out I was a little sick. Uh, I was diagnosed about two years ago, type 2 diabetic. Now, I maxed out at 445 pounds. Yeah, that's way past fluffy, okay? Let's be honest, that's not even, damn! 445 pounds, that's borderline Discovery Channel fat. That was like, I couldn't leave the house. Yeah? <laughs> He wants to go to the movies. It was really bad, you guys. And so I was waking up every morning with a, a 300 plus sugar level. Now, anyone who knows anything about diabetes, that is super high. And you do that enough times and eventually, <laughs> clear. It's so hard to say goodbye. They buried him in frosting. It was the sweetest funeral ever. Everyone got a cupcake, it was a shit. It was so nice. I'm at the doctor's office, you guys, and the doctor tells me, he says, listen, Gabriel, you're 445 pounds, your weight is out of control, your diabetes is out of control. You're 35 years old, you will not live another two years. I guarantee it. And I got very emotional, you know? I was like, are you serious? He goes, two years tops. And I was like, but I just started making money. Well, it's gonna be a nice funeral. I was like, what an ass. <laughs> so it took a lot for me to finally start doing something about it, you know, because it's not like this is the first time I try to lose weight. This has been happening for a long time, but somebody tells you you're gonna die, you actually wake up. So what it took was, it took the support of my friends, my family, and you know, especially, I gotta give credit where credit is due. Martin, you guys, helped me out so much because he's always encouraging me to go to the gym. Let's go work out, bro. Let's go do something. And more importantly than let's go work out is, you know, we're, we're on the road together 46 weeks out of the year, so we eat together a lot, and he's always watching what I eat. And if he sees me reaching for something I shouldn't mess with, he checks me, especially breakfast. That's my favorite meal. I love breakfast. And they always put us at these nice hotels where the, they give us this continental breakfast with the buffet, and, you know, if I'm eating eggs and bacon and sausage, that's fine. Yes, some of it's fattening, but guess what? No sugar. If Martin sees me reaching for muffins or waffles, he makes a scene. He waits for me to get about 15 feet away, and he starts yelling in front of all the people at the restaurant. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's still ghetto. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't care if it's a Ritz Carlton. Guess what? Machete's here. <laughs> he starts yelling. He waits for me to get 15 feet away, and then he starts. Really, bro? You're going to put that in your mouth, Fluffy? You know what that's gonna do to your body? Hey, have some self-respect. And he makes me cry at breakfast. I'm sad, I'm like, I don't want the muffin, I don't want it. I don't want the muffin, I'm not a little whore, I'm not, I'm not a little whore. But see, that is a real friend who would check me and remind me, hey bro, get mad at me all you want, I just want you to live. And I gotta respect that. That's why I love that dude, you know? And in turn, sometimes I gotta check Martin. Yeah. Believe me, you guys, it goes both ways. Sometimes I have to check him. Not about his weight, but he has his demons too. You know, oh, believe that. Yes, sometimes there's limited space at the hotels where we're staying at. So sometimes we gotta double up on a room. And every now and then, Martino brings some random girl to the room at three o'clock in the morning, wakes me up. I gotta look at him and say, Really, bro? You're gonna put that in your mouth? Do you know what that's gonna do to your body? Hey, have some stuff. He doesn't, he really doesn't. So, three years ago, I bought a beetle, not even thinking. That's not the joke, shut up. See, I can't even tell you guys this story already. 
I wasn't thinking. I bought the car because it was affordable, economical, brand new, freaking Beetle for like 17 grand. I was like, ah, first new car. I go to show it off at my friend Martin's house. I thought it was nice. I pull up, you know, Martin. He lives in the hood. I don't get out the car. Across the street, there are these gang members. They're kind of gang members. They don't really get into, you know, like shooting people and stuff like that. They just hang out on the porch and talk a lot of smack. And so I'm there in a beetle and across the street, I hear this, right? I'm like, Martin! And over here, I hear, Orale! <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? How'd you get in there, is it? <laughs> Two months later, I go back to pick him up. Now I've had some time to work on the car, right? I put some rims on it, some stickers. I put a chip in the motor so it goes faster. I thought it was bad, right? I pull up. Martin! Orale! Uh-uh, I'm not turning around. Hey! Mm -mm. Hey! I don't see you. I didn't even wait, man. I just... <laughs> got rid of that car, man. I traded it in and got myself a big old SUV. Oh, nice for a while. This car freaking sucked on mileage, so man, I got 11 miles to the gallon. Oh, you cannot be badass in a car that kills gas like I kill tacos. You can't. <laughs> you can't be at the stoplight trying to intimidate other cars. You know what? Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Twenty bucks right there. <laughs> Hell no, man. But it was kind of cool. It had a GPS navigational system in it, an OnStar, which was really cool. You know, I'm driving, and all of a sudden, this girl's talking to me. <laughs> right there and up ahead. <laughs> At three quarter tenths of a mile, left turn. And I'm like, whatever you say, baby. <laughs> a lot has changed, El Paso. A lot has changed. One thing's for sure, I'm still the fluffy guy. <laughs> and I say fluffy because that is the politically correct term. For those of you that don't remember, I used to say that there were five levels of fatness. Reason why I say used to say is because now there are six. Uh-huh, I met the new one in Las Cruces. Uh, the original five levels are big, healthy, husky, fluffy, and damn! People ask, what could be bigger than damn? The new level's called, oh, hell no! What's the difference? You're still willing to work with level five. <laughs> Example, if you're on an elevator and you're with your friend and this really big guy gets on and you and your friend look at each other and you're like, damn. <laughs> but you still let the big guy ride your elevator. That's the difference. Level six, you see walking towards your elevator. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> That's the difference. The guy that I met was six foot eight, 614 pounds. Uh -huh. Oh, hell no. And he was offended at my show. Not by anything that I said, but because of the fact that now at the shows, I started selling t-shirts. And apparently, I didn't have his size. Keep in mind, I go all the way up to 5X on the t-shirts. And he was like, you don't have my size. I was like, dude, I didn't know they made you. I have up to 5X. I don't have X. The picture of a dinosaur on the back of the tag, you know? No. And by the way, you guys, I want to let you know now, here in this theater and all over the world, wherever anybody's watching this special, if you ever see me, 
in public, either at a restaurant or at a hotel or anywhere, and you want to stop me and say hello or take a picture or anything, please, I welcome it, and it's an honor if you were to do that. I do not mind at all. Stop me anytime you want. I'm the same person. The same guy. Thank you. Seriously, the same guy you see now is the same guy you'd see outside. I don't change, you know. You're not going to walk up and go, Gabriel, can I talk to you? I'm not going to be like, be gone from me. <laughs> Gabriel is my stage name. I'm not even Mexican. I'm Scandinavian. No, trust me. I'm the same pendejo you'll see outside. I don't mind. I love it, you guys. Trust me. You guys make it possible for me to have an incredible life and take care of my family. So I'm all for it. Not a problem. Trust me. Right now, it's so crazy because I'm still adjusting to people walking up to me. I'm checking into the hotel, and they already knew me, which was crazy. I go like, oh, hi. I'm checking in. Here's your key, sir. What? Um, um, we know it's you, sir. What? <laughs> I think that's awesome. I needed that like six years ago. So let me tell you guys, I'm in the doctor's office and he tells me, he says, listen, Gabriel, obviously working out isn't cutting it. I have a friend who specializes in gastric bypass and I think it would benefit you greatly to at least listen to what the guy has to say. It couldn't hurt. So he hands me a card. The card says BH Surgical Center. I make an appointment. I show up to this place. I get to the door. The door doesn't say BH Surgical Center. It actually says Center for the Morbidly Obese. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that shit's not cute. <laughs> so I figure I'm there. I might as well check it out. So I walk in. I go over to the receptionist, and I ask, um, right spot? And she was cool. She was like, yes, sir, you're in the right location. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Absolutely. Why does it say Center for the Morbidly Obese on the door? The doctors prefer it that way. Why don't you have that on the card? Because then you won't come in. <laughs> first time? Yeah, first time. So she hands me a clipboard, and she goes, please take this clipboard and have a seat. They'll call you in a few minutes. So I turn around, and I sit down on this couch, and I start filling out the paperwork. And it wasn't like insurance forms and stuff like that. It was actually more of like a questionnaire. They ask you a bunch of questions, and you have to answer from 1 to 10 how unhealthy you think you are. And it's not going good. It's not. I'm like, ugh, freaking 8, 8, 9, 9, 9, 9, 10, 9, 9, 10, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And as I'm filling out the paperwork outside the door, I hear. <laughs> All of a sudden, the door opens up, and this dude walks in. <laughs> It's like, oh my God, you're morbid. <laughs> Immediately, my score got better. I'm like, shoot, I'm a 4-4, 3-3-3, 2-2-2, 1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1. I'm healthy by default. <laughs> he makes his way over to the receptionist, and she's like, are you here for the 8-30? Is this your first time here? Because the doctors prefer it that way. Because then you won't come in. Oh, God. Take this clipboard and have a seat. They'll call you in a few minutes. So he turns around and he looks at me and my sofa. And he's like, I swear, it was like the opening scene to the movie Pacific Rim. He's like, Ooh. I was like, ah! no, no one's sitting here. <laughs> yeah, it's all you, bro.
he turns around and he lines himself up with the sofa and he starts doing this little shuffle backwards. Now keep in mind, I see this coming towards me, right? He's like, all of a sudden the back of his knees hit the edge of the couch and you hear the click. And then free fall. And he hit and I was like, woo! And at that moment, they call me in, you know, Mr. Iglesias, hey, wish me luck. So I walk into the office, I'm greeted by a nurse. The nurse is really nice. In addition to being nice, she's actually a fan, which made it so much better for me. She comes over and she's like, Mr. Iglesias, this is such an honor. I, I'm such a huge fan. I am going to make this as painless as possible. I have to weigh you. I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I weighed myself at the house. I'm 445 pounds. I'm good. I have to confirm that. And in my head, I'm like, why would I make that up? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you're 200 pounds and you lie and say you're 195, I get it. But once you achieve a certain level of, <laughs> it's pretty clear. So I said, fine. Where's it at? Excuse me? Where's it at? Where's the scale? Because I want to walk up to the scale so I can grab the stupid brick, pick it up, slide it all the way to the end, and put it down. You know the scale I'm talking about, right? The one that has that heavy arm where you get on and it's loud. <laughs> I call it the scale Nazi. You get on and it's like, <laughs> uh -huh. She starts laughing. She goes, Mr. Iglesias, you are so silly. Actually, our scale is industrial. <laughs> Anytime someone uses the word industrial and you're in the sentence, oh, <laughs> you messed up. <laughs> she goes, Mr. Iglesias, it's built directly into the floor. Stand on the little X. I'm like, oh my God, I'm a semi. And then she gives me instructions. She goes, Yo, Mr. Glacius, listen, stand still. I'm going to press the little button on the wall. It's going to make a sound, and then your weight is going to appear in the little window. And I'm like, make a sound? In my head, I'm like, I hope it's not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm bracing myself. I'm waiting. I'm like, Ugh. and then she presses it, and it was actually cute. It was like a casino sound. It was like, <laughs> hold on, my shoes. <laughs> You're laughing, it's three pounds, bro.